Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a little pre-market prep webinar we're going to do here, a little special Memorial Day thing. It is May 31st, 2022. The way we're going to kick this off is we're going to walk through just scanning because a lot of the questions I get are, do you watch the same set of stocks? How do you get started trading large caps if you don't know which set of stocks to watch? What do you do? What's the process? Go through that. So first off, I'm always using Thinkorswim. I'm not paying for a scanner. When you recreate that in Thinkorswim, it's kind of difficult because you need all of this special little code right here. But um, all I'm really doing is grabbing the one things that have liquidity. I don't want to see everything that's got one trade of 10,000 shares. And then I'm looking at that stuff. I don't want to see that stuff. I want to see stuff that's got liquidity. If any of y'all want to have that, let me share that with y'all. For those of you watching the webinar, if you type in that link right there, you can have it. Here it is again in the chat. This will be large. So basically, Joe, if they copy this link, they'll scan. be able to get the same scan. Exactly. I'm going to jump over to charts. Let's say I don't have anything, right? Let's say I don't have a single idea about what I'm going to be watching. First and foremost, the first two things you need to watch every single time if you're a big cap trader, SPY and QQQ. You need those on a chart at all times. You need to see them. You need to know what the market's doing. So really what I'm looking for is something along these lines to where at the open, you know, during pre-market, this has kind of been what we're, what we're working with here. And then at the open, what I'm going to look for is pre-market highs as a set risk, probably this whole dollar 17, unless between now and then we start to jam through that, and then the plan may change. So what we could experience is a sell off, right? And then at the open, we're looking for this little push risk on pre-market highs. And as soon as it starts to top out, meaning putting in a wick and starts to get weak, we can get in on that with a, with a risk up here for the wash back to 15. So with NIO, when I look at this, I, I immediately already know what this ticker is because of the electric vehicle run that it went through. And now looking at it, I'm like, well, steaming pile of trash, just like I thought. So again, I'm going to trade with the trend here. The market's gapping down both markets, QQQ and SPY, and it's doing nothing but fading. We're coming from a holiday weekend. So I, I don't expect there to be a lot of follow through today because we had several up days in a row. So if I bring these two charts over, I have these on another screen and I have these up at all times, the SPY and the queues, I have them up at all times. I have them on a five day, five minute, five day, five minute. And I'm always looking for this. Now, for those of you that have not watched any of the webinars or attended any of the large cap webinars, you're going to notice in this top left here, this bullish tag. Okay. If you don't know what this is, don't blindly assume it's just buy it because it's bullish. Okay. I don't care what CNB says, CNBC says, I don't care what Wall Street says. No one will confirm we're in a recession because I don't think, I think they don't want to scare everyone. So I could see NIO having this move at the open up to 18 and that being pretty much a top out point for it. So I would be basing my trade on 18 and I'd be looking for any kind of push on AMC back into this 1620 area. I'd be looking for anything back into 1620, risking around pre-market highs to 17. All right. So Joe mentioned in the start of the webinar, if I've ever paid for a scanner or if I've ever done anything like that, I never paid for a scanner until I learned about this on DOS. So the way you go here is you go to quotes and then you go to the top list. And this is pretty much every, oops, this is pretty much every stock that's gapping up or down on the day. So pretty much what I do here, guys, for me is 
to find the new stocks of the day, I just go through the top game list and go through the first like 15 or 20 of them, right? So TXMD, I already looked at it. That was like a buyout. Give me one second. TXMD was a buyout. Jan was another one. So Jan looks like a former runner. So what I'm doing is the same thing as Joe, right? I'm going to the chart. I'm looking at the chart. What am I seeing here? I'm seeing some resistance around four. I'm seeing some resistance around 430 and some resistance around five bucks. So this is something that has the potential to be a hot chick on the day. So, I mean, I just keep it on the side right now, right? So uh, I just go down the list, right? That, so this is why I don't pay for a scanner. It's because the scanner is right there for me free. It's already there for free. All you gotta do is quotes and top list. This way you don't pay for unnecessary costs. And I didn't figure this out until I already started making money from trading. And then I was like, I'm not gonna pay $500 uh, a month here and it's free. And on top of that, if you have MIC, people already pay for scanners in MIC, so we just post it. So to me, having a scanner is useless. I just look at what's gapping up or down on the day pretty much. So also what I like to do, guys, is I go through the previous day's watch list, right? So let me pull that up right here. This is a previous day's watch list from Friday. So I pull up the watch list and I pretty much just go through the previous stocks on the day there. So let me actually, so I'm just gonna go through the list and then we're gonna, Pretty much build it together. Is there anything in particular about RDBX that would tell a new trader it's crowded or not crowded? I mean, you gotta watch it every day. So every day, the price action has been. Now guys, I'm gonna jump in here as, as Alex is typing that. If you are a new trader to small caps and you are not using these watch lists like a Bible, you are at a immediate disadvantage. What Use these is, watch lists. What I'm telling people, Joe, is if they're watching a stock that's not on the watch list, chances are there's no edge on it. And that's why it's not on the watch list. I'm always thinking, what's the best case scenario? This people are like, oh, best case scenario is gonna go to 50 cents, it's gonna go to a dollar. No, not on your timeline, not on your horizon. I could only make 20 cents on this stock. I don't like it. So I move on to the next one. So if it's a if it's a dollar fifty or a two dollar stock, right, under three bucks, what's that ideal range that you're looking for? So Siga. So here here's where here's what my potential top watch is. So this stock, guys, this stock was moving on the monkeypox virus. And as Alex is typing that, I'm gonna tell you guys. If you don't know what SSR is, or you don't know what the tendencies of SSR are, then you need to go to the video library, type in the search bar, SSR, watch all the videos on SSR. We will tell you every single little secret, little tip that you need to know about trading when SSR is on. One billion million. Uh, GME and AMC. So AMC guys is, so the daily chart, it's like some resistance in the 1620s. So something like AMC guys, I would look to short the bounce right at the open, right? I want to short the bounce. So there's two possible scenarios here, right? The two possible scenarios are they tank it towards support here in the morning. So it'll wash out towards support and bounce. So for me, I'm looking for AMC, a bounce toward 16, 16.50 and 17 with stop at 17 20. and amc has a sister stock that sister stock is gme and gme is already red so gme is already red this has some relative weakness so on something like gme i really like if it went to what and 138 140 and maybe 142 and the reason why i'm scaling so much uh more loose on this stock is because of the range already pre-market has like four or five dollars worth of range so i would need to use less size to be able to account for the range better so these stocks will move together um still going down the list Pusa. so these are oil stocks so oil uso is moving up like crazy so these oils uh small cap stocks are going crazy i mean these stocks already made their parabolic move and now there's way too many wonks stuck so it'll technically never make a move back to 17. I mean, it's very rare. I don't want to say never, but I would say there's a better chance of Joe winning the lottery than this shit going back to 17.
But the problem is that everyone thinks it will do the same thing as last time. So that gives us, you know, these moves. But again, there's a better, there's a better chance of me longing in the company not having an offering. Exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, what do I see here, guys? I see a couple, couple scenarios here. So the next one is Husa. I mean, for Husa's sister stock is INDO. In terms of the watches, these are pretty much my top watches for the day. Um, you know, if some people are asking about um, ADVL, so give me a sec. Uh, I mean, what I see here is maybe a 250 rejection with a 270 stop. And then if people have questions about sizing into the watches or how to scale into the watches, I always include this video in the watches so that you guys could pretty much uh, watch like a short two minute video that teaches you how to use the 30% size and scale into the watches. So that's pretty much it. And in terms of the top watches on this watch list, I would do Siga. Actually, no, I would do probably INDO and HUSA first as top watches, then Siga, then AMC and GameStop. So if someone were to come in and look at the watch list, look at all the stocks that you have available, they have a small account. Let's not even say a small account. Let's say they have 30,000, right? They open an account with Success Trader, right? They're new to it. They have a $30,000 account. They look at your watch list. How would you, what do you suggest a new trader do to avoid over locating and having unused shares? Okay, so this is a good question. So that's it. Let's make some money.